does it mean to be healthy and what are my five steps to get there? Hi, my name is Dr. Pete. I am a PhD biochemist and a Nutrition Network coach practitioner. I am 64 years old. I am a father and a husband. I'm a rock climber and a cave diver and I have not always had my health. In 2016, I was diagnosed with gout and then in 2019, I was diagnosed with prediabetes. The onset of gout and prediabetes honestly put me on my ass. And for the first time in my life, it caused me to think about what it means to be healthy. Back when I started this journey several years ago, I felt like many people that health was simply not being sick. But here I was with gout and prediabetes, therefore I was sick. And the medical establishment's point of view about this was for me to eat the Mediterranean diet and exercise more. However, let me clarify something. When I was diagnosed with gout, I was in my third year as a CrossFit athlete because I had already begun to realize as I left my middle ages and moved into older age that my health was declining. I was overweight, I didn't feel good, I didn't have much energy, I was worried about food all the time. How was I gonna get enough food? How, how would I be able to get through the day and so on? And I was inactive, essentially. And I, being concerned about this, I had started CrossFit three years before I was diagnosed with gout. But even as I worked out in the CrossFit gym, I saw a couple of things that were not happening to me. Number one, the weight was not going down. Number two, my energy level didn't seem to really be changing either. And my dependency on having to eat more and more high carbohydrate food seemed to be going up. So later when I was diagnosed as being pre-diabetic, that's when I realized that I really had to step back and start thinking about what health means to me. Just thinking about that word and trying to come up with a definition for it. One thing that I know health is not, and that is a measurement of sickness. That has really nothing to do with health in the sense of trying to find a place to, uh, to be where you are living a life that pushes you away from the tendency to be sick. And so what does that look like? So health is a constellation of characteristics or motivations or uh, principles that somebody lives by. This is how I think about it. Health includes what you put in your mouth, but more about that later. Health also has to do with activity level, being a healthy, active adult. And in our 60s, as a male, this is even more important because we lose uh, our strength and we lose power a certain percentage every single, every single decade of our life. And if we're inactive, we maximize how much strength and power and balance and so on that we're losing each decade. So part of health is maintaining activity level. And that comes in a lot of different forms. More on that later. My view on health also includes healthy relationships. The relationship between myself and my wife, my daughter, my closest friends, and, and having things that I do in my life that I love. And that's why I'm still rock climbing in my 60s because this is a passion that I have. And just because I did it when I was in my younger years and now I'm older and I, I, I feel you know, the depletion of years, right? I have sore fingers, my shoulders can ache, and so on, doesn't mean that I should stop loving what I do. Instead, I, my view of health is to step up and continue doing that stuff, continue being involved in that activity, and having the relationships with the people that you meet and that you do this activity with. And then there's the question of energy levels, right? And energy is one of these things where you feel like doing, right? And when you're inactive for years and years and years, and this is especially, I think, important again for older males, that if we can just get off the couch 
and get started with different things, then the tendency to get back on, on the couch is lower. And the amount of energy that we feel is going to be in proportion to all the other things that I just mentioned. You know, literally what you're putting in your mouth, the, the quality of the relationships that we have, participating in activities that we love to do, whatever that is, which also segues back into relationships because most of the time in these kinds of activities, you're going to be doing them with, with people that you have friendships with and that you care about. And it's my view as a 64 year old male that if I think about health in this broader sense, that this positions us on, on the far side of sickness. It keeps us in a place where we can enjoy health, have greater longevity, and have a higher quality of life as we get older. So here are my five tips for greater health in the context of how I defined the concept. Number one, what you put in your mouth matters. Cut the sugar, the alcohol, the grains, potatoes, and added sugars, processed food. Number two, eat real whole food that you cut up and cook yourself. Number three, have an exercise program and in all honesty, that should be composed of three major areas. The first is having an activity that you love to do and doing it. The second thing is strength training. You gotta pick up heavy objects and then set them back down again. It's imperative in the exercise program that we're pushing against that natural decline in strength, power, balance, core strength, and so on that happens every single decade and that can catch up with us. Our goal in our 60s and later years is to push back on that transition as much as possible. So we have number one, the activity level. Number two, we have the strength training, picking up heavy objects. And the last part of the exercise issue is uh, high intensity training. You've got to do things that get your heart rate up really, really high for short durations of time. And if you do all of three of these things together, the activity, the strength training, and high intensity training, you will feel the best that you've ever felt. And right now, I know that my own quote unquote health is that of a 20 or 30 year old. I've been doing this now for about six years though. So, this is something with the exercise thing that you need to start and you do it incrementally and you build as you go and as you do this you will feel better you will feel like you can move uh, you won't be so tempted to stay on the couch because of the feeling that you just can't do certain things right it's about a mindset change that mindset you can do this stuff right and you will feel better when you do it you will make more friends. You will build on relationships. You guys start to see how all this is tied together. Number four, reduce stress. Stress has a massive effect on our metabolism and we have to work very hard at relieving stress, finding strategies to bring your stress levels down. For those of us that are older, this may mean changing our workplace. And I know this is a touchy subject, especially in the world that we're in right now because everyone needs to make money in order to live. But maybe there is something you could be doing for a paycheck that is not so stressful. And we need to think about that because the stress issue is dr directly related to our overall health. Meditation may be something that is helpful. Also, learning how to breathe properly so that during the day we can keep our arousal level down as low as possible. Healthy relationships can help also reduce stress. Having relationships uh, in terms of friendships, for example, the kinds of things that happen when you are highly active, right, and you're reaching out and you're participating in, in with groups of people that are similar in age to you, for example, and even the younger crew, right, there's a lot to learn from the 20 and 30 year olds 
like I do when I'm in the climbing gym with these guys that are less than half my age. There's value in thinking about health on all these different levels because when you do that, your stress level is going to come down and your metabolism is going to work better. And number five, sleep is not overrated. In fact, it's underrated. Sleep is super important to us. Now, am I one of those guys that's going to tell you that you got to have eight to nine hours of sleep every single every single day? No, I'm not because we are all individuals and the, the amount of quality sleep that you need is going to be based on your own biology. What I know is it's important to to get a handle on what that number is for you and then to make sure that you're getting adequate sleep every single day. Sleep has a profound effect on metabolism and this is especially for the guys out there who are in my age range as a male who are thinking about weight loss for example. So getting poor sleep contributes to weight gain, right? All these things that I've now talked about because we're on the fifth tip that I have for, for overall health the way I've defined it. And weight loss many, many times is a concern for people that are our age. But if you're eating right, you've got a, a good exercise program, a high level of activity, these other things that I'm talking about, you're reducing stress. And tip number five here, you're paying attention to getting high quality sleep. Then all of these things that you may have concerns about are going to improve. So just a couple of the things that can influence sleep in a negative way, the consumption of alcohol. There's no other way to say this. If you have an alcoholic drink uh, in the evening, it will affect your sleep patterns without any question. Eating sugary foods after dinner also is going to disrupt your sleep. For me, when I think about health, I think about the next few decades because remember, I'm 64 years old and I'm thinking about what those couple of decades are going to look like in my life, how active I'm going to be, whether or not I could potentially be uh, confronting a chronic disease, how um, my relationship is going to be with my grandchildren. And I want an active life. I want to be able to take my grandchildren scuba diving, for example, and, and rock climbing. I don't want to be that old bitter grandpa that is sitting in a nursing home with my feet elevated on oxygen. And finally, living by these five principles, I reverse my diabetes and my gout is in remission. And I am living a full, robust life in my mid-60s.